Welcome back to Galaxy Recaps. Today we'll be diving into an action thriller film titled The Gunman. Enjoy the recap. The movie begins in 2006 where a fierce civil war wreaks havoc in the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, fueled by a power struggle among several multinational mining companies vying for control of the nation's valuable resources. Amidst this turmoil, the DRC's Minister of Mining and Natural Resources abruptly announces the cancellation and renegotiation of contracts with all foreign mining companies, sending shockwaves through the global mining industry. Jim Terrier, a black ops mercenary, is covertly deployed in the DRC under the guise of providing security for local projects. One night, while stationed at an airstrip, Jim's partner Annie, a doctor working with an NGO, declines her co-worker Felix Moore's offer to escort her home, preferring to wait for Jim instead. Meanwhile, Jim and his team receive their mission orders. They are to assassinate the minister. The team, which includes Reed and Bryson, is assigned specific roles by their leader, Terence Cox. He informs them that their supervisor, Felix, will decide who among them will take the crucial shot which they'll have only a tiny five-second window to execute. To cover the shooter's escape, Felix has also made immediate extraction preparations. Taking up his assigned position in a nearby hotel, Jim carefully assembles his sniper rifle. As the operation progresses, Felix contacts Jim, informing him that he has been chosen to take the shot. Realizing that this mission will force him to flee the country soon, Jim asks Felix to keep an eye on Annie after he leaves. With the operation underway, Jim smoothly takes his shot, assassinating the minister and quickly escaping. The DRC is soon engulfed in chaos, with widespread riots and violence erupting in the aftermath of the assassination. Eight years later, Jim has returned to the DRC, now working as a humanitarian relief worker. One morning, he accompanies his colleague Eugene, to a remote village where they are tasked with constructing a well to provide clean water for the locals. Suddenly, a gang arrives at the village, their focus locked on Jim. He tries to explain his peaceful intentions, assuring them that he only wishes to bring clean water to the villagers, but his words are ignored and he is attacked. Drawing on his military skills, Jim fends off his attackers, using their own weapons against them in a fierce struggle. Eugene, witnessing the danger, panics but ultimately shoots one of the gang members to protect Jim. Shocked by his own actions, Eugene stands frozen as the dust settles. Searching the bodies, Jim discovers clues indicating the attack was specifically orchestrated to target him. Realizing that his past actions may have come back to haunt him, Jim thanks Eugene and tries to reassure him, insisting he did the right thing by intervening. Concerned for the safety of their team and the villagers, Jim advises Eugene to cease all current operations to protect everyone involved in the humanitarian mission. After returning to his hotel room in Kinshasa, Jim is haunted by memories of the assassination and decides he must leave the DRC immediately. He heads to London where he settles in his residence and sifts through his notes from his time in Congo years ago. Still disturbed by the recent attack, he contacts his former colleague Taryn, sharing his suspicion that the ambush could be tied to their operation in the DRC. Taryn reminds him that only their clients, likely politicians and mining corporations, knew about the mission besides their team. He adds that Felix was the sole contact with these clients and suggests they track him down, potentially in Barcelona, to investigate further. Concerned the entire team could be in danger, Taryn agrees to reach out to Reed and Bryson as a precaution. As Jim exits the building, he notices he's being tailed by an unknown group. Reacting quickly, he loses his pursuers and finds his way to a bar where he meets his friend Stanley. Jim shares his suspicions, explaining that whoever ordered the attack expected clear proof of his elimination. Determined to find the people behind the attempt on his life, Jim is interrupted when a bar fight breaks out with a drunken patron. Stanley manages to get Jim out, but Jim is suddenly overcome by severe dizziness. Concerned, Stanley takes him for medical tests, which reveal a diagnosis of cumulative head trauma from post-concussion syndrome. The doctor advises Jim to avoid stressful situations, as there is no specific treatment for his condition. Despite the warning, Jim insists on finding Felix in Barcelona, convincing Stanley to help with travel arrangements. Concerned for Jim's health, Stanley promises to join him there if needed. In Barcelona, Jim arrives at a safe house set up by Stanley's contacts, finding a gun and ammunition awaiting him. Soon, he tracks down Felix and, to his shock, discovers Annie with him. As he follows them through the city, Jim observes them entering an international adoption agency. What Jim doesn't know, however, is that he's also being watched. 
Aware of Felix's movements, Jim attends a seminar where Felix is a speaker. When he makes his presence known, Felix is visibly disturbed at seeing his old friend. After the seminar, the two meet, and Jim learns that Felix and Annie are now married. Felix, shaken by the reunion, promises to investigate the attack further. He then invites Jim to join him and Annie for dinner that evening. Later that night, Jim goes to the restaurant where Annie is shocked to see him. Felix, it turns out, hadn't informed her about inviting Jim, hoping it would be a surprise. But Annie is visibly uncomfortable seeing Jim after all these years, especially now that she is married to Felix. In an effort to escalate tension, Felix announces his and Annie's adoption plans during dinner, which visibly infuriates Annie. Jim steps in, shoving Felix away, and Annie, embarrassed and angry, storms out of the restaurant. Jim follows her, apologizing for unexpectedly re-entering her life. He gives her his address, suggesting she can reach out if Felix finds any useful information on the attack, but Annie leaves in frustration. The next day, Jim receives an invitation from Felix and Annie to join them for lunch at their countryside home. Arriving there, Jim finds a somewhat inebriated Felix, who admits that Jim's suspicion about the attack being connected to the assassination may be correct. Felix mentions that their names, including Jim's and Terence's, are on a congressional subpoena list, and that Interpol is tracking them regarding the 2006 events in Congo. However, Jim notices that Reed and Bryson's names are missing, and Felix reveals that Jim is the only surviving member of the three shooters from their team. Realizing the severity of the threat, Jim tells Felix that he has invited Stanley to join them, causing Felix to act nervously before excusing himself. Sensing Felix's secrecy, Jim discreetly follows and takes his phone, discovering that Felix has been communicating with someone about Jim's movements. Jim confronts Annie in their bedroom, explaining that he lied about inviting Stanley and warning her that Felix's actions could endanger all of them. Suddenly, he notices mercenaries surrounding the property. Reacting quickly, he pulls Annie to the ground just as shots begin ringing out. In the ensuing chaos, Jim saves Felix from being hit but can't prevent him from getting wounded due to his drunken state. Following Jim's instructions, a terrified Annie stays close as they maneuver through the house, evading the mercenaries who infiltrate silently. Hiding in the wine cellar, Jim takes down one of the mercenaries, calmly stripping him of his bulletproof vest, weapon, and communication device. Annie watches, disturbed, as Jim's tactical instincts take over. Outside, the mercenaries systematically dake out the household staff, leaving Jim and Annie in a deadly game of survival. As more gunmen close in, Jim is chased through the house, eventually taking cover in a bathroom. The mercenaries fire relentlessly at the bathroom door, pausing only to communicate with Jim over their comms, offering to spare Annie's life if he surrenders. Jim refuses, knowing it's a trap. To force him out, the mercenaries set the bathroom ablaze, hoping to flush him into an ambush by the skylight. Anticipating their moves, Jim kills the mercenary positioned there, using the corpse to break through the skylight. He then charges through the flaming doorway, lobbing a grenade that momentarily incapacitates the attackers as he rushes back to Annie. They make a break for the car, speeding off as Jim throws another grenade toward their pursuers, which explodes and disrupts the mercenaries' chase long enough for Jim and Annie to escape. Later, they arrive at a shed owned by a farmer friend of Annie's, where they borrow a car. During their escape, Annie presses Jim for answers. He reveals that his cover operation in Congo, allegedly for airstrip security, was actually a front for supplying weapons to rebels, with Felix acting as the intermediary. When Annie asks about his role in the minister's assassination, Jim admits his responsibility, explaining that it forced him to flee Africa. He says he attempted to contact her afterward, but Felix always intercepted his efforts, assuring him that Annie was safe. Upon reaching his place, Jim instructs Annie to drive around the block for 15 minutes, telling her to leave if he doesn't reappear later. Carefully entering his apartment through a window, he gathers his essentials and then notices a tripwire rigged with an explosive at the front door. Crawling to avoid detection, he spots a figure in the building across the street. He disarms the tripwire and devises a trap, intending to lure his attackers. Jim exits, ensuring he's seen re-entering the building and opening his door safely. Moments later, he re-engages the tripwire and leaves the apartment. As anticipated, when the attackers arrive and open the door, a massive explosion occurs, neutralizing them while Jim safely heads downstairs to meet Annie. They soon meet Stanley at a new safe house, where Jim learns that an organization, disguised as an international trading company and managed by Taran, is behind the attacks. Stanley reveals that with a lucrative deal on the horizon, 
the company is attempting to erase any loose ends that could jeopardize its future. He also warns Jim that Annie is now at risk as Felix has already been executed. The next morning, Jim leaves a heartfelt note for Annie, says goodbye to Stanley and sets off alone. Outside Taryn's office building in Gibraltar, he encounters Interpol agent Jackie Barnes, sharing intel on the impending Interpol raid on Taryn's organization. Jackie gives Jim his contact information before leaving, and Jim later spots Taryn heading out of the office. Jim leaves a message for him, instructing Taryn to meet him at an aquarium within the hour. Despite struggling with his head injury, Jim confronts Taryn, pressing him on how to make things right. Taryn, meanwhile stalling for time, mocks Jim while secretly directing his team to locate them. Growing desperate, Jim informs Taryn he has information on everything that happened in Congo, forcing Taryn to admit Annie's life is in jeopardy due to Jim's actions. Enraged, Jim shoots at Taryn, who warns that killing him won't end Jim's troubles. There will always be someone else hunting him. Just then, Taryn's team arrives and Jim makes a desperate run for it firing at his pursuers while evading their bullets. In the chaos, he unknowingly drops his diary, and his unsent message to Stanley, warning him to stay alert, remains on his phone. Succumbing to a massive headache, Jim collapses, leaving his fate uncertain. Later that night, Jim regains consciousness and immediately calls Stanley, only to hear Taryn's voice on the other end. Taryn reveals that they have captured and brutally beaten Stanley, though he has remained loyal to Jim. He adds that Annie hasn't been spared either. In a chilling moment, Stanley pleads with Jim to take down Taryn before Taryn executes him with a gunshot to the head. Taryn explains that they tracked Jim down using his lost diary and offers Annie's life in exchange for Jim's surrender. Jim, using a video of Taryn assigning roles for the assassination along with other incriminating diaries as leverage, arranges a meeting with Taryn the next day at a city bullfight, insisting that Annie be brought along. The next day, just before the meeting, Jim calls Interpol agent Jackie Barnes for backup. As Jim arrives, Taryn's crew grows anxious. Jim demands that Annie be released from the stadium, promising they'll receive the video afterward. Taryn's men soon spot Jim and attempt to intercept him in the gallery. Jim quickly loses them behind a wall and neutralizes one who gets too close. The chase intensifies as another henchman pursues Jim with his gun ready. Thinking fast, Jim opens gates to release several bulls, creating chaos as a gunfight erupts. Amid the chaos, Jim narrowly avoids bullets, using his surroundings to corner his assailant, ultimately killing him, though he is wounded in the process. The injury, coupled with his worsening condition, takes a toll, but he presses on. As Taryn hears of his men's deaths, he tries to escape with Annie. However, Annie seizes an opportunity and bolts into the crowd with Taryn in hot pursuit. Meanwhile, Jim gets shot from behind, leading to a fierce firefight with Taryn's last henchman. The clash escalates into hand-to-hand -hand combat, and though Jim is weakened, he manages to overpower and incapacitate his attacker. Annie, desperate to escape, jumps over the rails to the ring with Taryn firing shots to close in on her. Jim, barely holding on, throws his opponent's body off the rails, which releases another bull into the arena. Annie spots Jim across the ring just as Taryn catches up, holding her at gunpoint and demanding the documents. As Taryn advances, Jim's blurred vision is just sharp enough for him to land a couple of bullets into Taryn. With Taryn injured, Annie scrambles away. A gate opens, releasing the bull which charges at Taryn, delivering the final blow and ending his life. At that moment, police swarm the stadium, separating Jim and Annie. Later, at the hospital, Jim agrees to cooperate with Interpol's investigation, which ultimately leads to the CEO of a major global mining company being arrested for orchestrating the assassination in Congo. Over time, Jim is released from prison and makes his way back to Congo, where he finally reunites with Annie, ready to start anew. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.